Okay, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games, and today we're going to be dealing with the SAT. So the SAT is a tool that is going to be making our lives considerably easier in the coming weeks. And if you're a North American high school student, this is approximately where you should be starting to become suspicious that if you clicked on this video thinking you were going to find information about the Scholastic Aptitude Test, then you are indeed in the wrong place. Let's talk about the separated axis theorem. So today we're going to be taking a step back from triangles and 3D collisions, and we're instead going to be talking a little bit more theory when it comes to 3D collisions. So the separated axis theorem is a test for figuring out if two arbitrary shapes, uh, if they intersect, and it does so by trying to find a line that you can draw between them. To illustrate the point, I'm going to be drawing up a few diagrams in 2D space. It also works in 3D space and in higher dimensional spaces. But if you have two shapes, let's say these two rectangles, and if you are able to find a line that you can draw between them, then that is one axis of separation, and you know that these two shapes are not intersecting. And this is a fairly solid generic test that you can use for a bunch of different collision shapes in 3D space. Note that this will only work for shapes that are convex, or at the very least, it'll only work for shapes that are not concave. If you have a shape that's, some that's shaped something like this, then it is possible for... Um, it to be intersecting with another shape without any possible axis, axes of separation being found between them. But regardless, this should pave the way for a number of potential 3D collision uh, tests between different shapes, which might otherwise be considerably more work to evaluate. So I'm going to start by defining a few more helper functions. Um, I guess I could put it inside the call helper functions code file, but instead I think I will put um, I will put code related to the separated axis theorem in its own code file. So I'm going to call this call SAT stuff. And this is going to be a couple different functions. Uh, the first one that I'm going to define is going to be function, I'm going to call it call interval. And it's going to take two parameters, val min and val max. It's going to be a constructor. And this is essentially just going to uh, create a struct. Uh, which which takes these two input parameters, the val min and the val max, and it's going to save them to, uh, to instance variables of itself, self.val max equals val max. I would love to be able to just call these two values min and max, but min and max are, are reserved functions of GameMaker, and I am not allowed to name variables that, unfortunately. So we'll just be going with val min and val max. So this is a simple data structure which is going to represent a, well, an interval, as the name implies, on a single axis. So it is going to represent a minimum point on that axis as well as a maximum point. We'll see an example of this in practice soon enough. Next, let us go into the axis aligned bounding box class down here and let us re-implement a collision check which we have already implemented uh, using the SAT instead of using um, just the, the analytical method that we were using earlier. So I'm going to add at the bottom uh, some code. I'm going to add a method static check ab sat. And we've reached the point where none of these things sound like words anymore. Uh, this is going to be a function which takes an ab, which takes an axis aligned bounding box. And it's going to return a result. And I'm going to just temporarily uh, comment out all of this up here. Uh, everything that's already in the axis aligned bounding box check ab method, and we're just going to return self.check ab a a b b s a t with the input parameter. And we are going to uh, we are going to re-implement this. Let's just return false for now. Uh, if we run the game now, and if I were to pit two axis aligned bounding boxes against each other, we would see that uh, we are no longer going to be detecting collision with either of these shapes, even though we totally should be. Okay, we're going to re-implement that. That is going to be largely the focus of today's video to, uh, to illustrate what you can do with the, uh, the separated axis theorem. So let's start with the axes. So the separated axis theorem is going to test for possible axes of separation between two shapes, as I said. Uh, this tends to be easiest if you have two axis aligned bounding boxes, if the two shapes in question are axis aligned bounding boxes, because uh, you already know that there are three potential axes of separation between these, and they're never going to change, and they're always going to be the same. And if you were to try to do this with other more complicated shapes, then you would have far more axes that you can test, which is going to quickly add a lot to the amount of code that you have to write. 
And the three axes that you can possibly draw between two axis aligned boundary boxes are going to be, I'm going to create myself a variable of our axes. And those are going to be a new vector three. And the first one is going to contain a one on the x-axis, a zero on the y-axis, and a zero on the z-axis. The second one is going to be a vector three containing a zero on the x-axis, a one on the y-axis, and a zero on the z-axis. And you can probably see where this is going. New vector three, zero on the x-axis, zero on the y-axis, and one on the z-axis. And these are the potential three axes that you might uh, that you might be able to test between two axis aligned bounding boxes. They're not called axis aligned for nothing. Next, we're going to loop through each of these axes for var i equals zero, i is less than three, i plus plus. And we are going to see if there is any intersection between these shapes on these two axes. Again, here is a visual representation of uh, two rectangles in 2D space. If we were to check the x-axis for overlap, uh, we would, for example, draw the x-axis on this diagram, and we would uh, get the interval between the minimum and the maximum point of the first rectangle on the x-axis, and we would get the minimum between the first and the second point on the x-axis on the second rectangle. And if those two intervals overlap, that means that we do not have an axis of separation. If we were to test it again on the y-axis, we would do the same thing using the minimum and maximum intervals on the y-axis for each of these two rectangles and check to see if they overlap or not. If there are no free axes, then we know that the shapes are intersecting. Uh, otherwise, uh, we can write a little bit of code. If not, I'm going to define a new function in a minute call overlap axis. Uh, this is a function that I'm going to write momentarily. It's going to take two parameters. It's going to take three parameters, I'm sorry. The first parameter is going to be self, which is going to be a, a, an axis aligned bounding box. The second parameter is going to be the one that we're checking against. And the third parameter is going to be the axis in question. So axis, axis, plural, at index i. And uh, like I said, if no overlap is found on this axis, we know that there is an axis of separation between these two shapes. We can return false. Uh, otherwise, if there is an overlap on each of the, uh, the three axes, we know that there is a collision, we can return true. So uh, let's get to the overlap on axis function. And this is going to go in the SAT stuff uh, script file. And like I said, this is going to take three parameters, function call overlap axis. Uh, the first axis is going to just be shape one. The second parameter is going to be shape two. And the third parameter is going to be the axis that we're testing. This is just going to be a regular fun function which returns a value. It's not going to be a constructor. So call overlap axis is a function that's going to just return a value. It's not going to be a constructor. Uh, this is also going to just work the same for pretty much every single possible combination of shapes. So I don't have to do any fancy. Um, I don't have to implement this separately for any possible combination of shapes that you might want to test for uh, axes of overlap. And to do so, uh, we are going to find the interval that both shape one and shape two take up on the specified axis. And I'm going to um, I'm going to say var a is going to be the interval on the axis of shape one, and var b is going to be the uh, the interval on on the axis of shape two. And we are going to implement a few new functions, specifically um, a function to return the interval that each shape takes up on the axis. Uh, so I'm going to say shape one dot get interval. And uh, this is going to take a single parameter. Again, I'm going to implement this soon enough. Uh, B is going to be the same thing, but shape two dot get interval on the axis. And then to see if the two intervals overlap, uh, you can probably you can probably reason through this visually. Uh, here's the diagram again, if it helps, uh, we can return return um, B dot val min is less than or equal to a dot val max. And I'll, I'll put these in parentheses just, just for safety. And a dot val min is less than or equal to b dot val max. And there's a space where there shouldn't be in this, in this less than or equal to. 
So this is just going to check to see if the, um, the minimum value of one is less than or equal to the maximum value of the other, or vice versa. If either of the intervals overlap, then this is going to return true. If neither of these intervals overlap, then it is going to return false. So going back to the, uh, to the shape, I'm going to need to now define static get interval, and that's going to be a function which takes an axis as the parameter. Fair warning, this isn't going to be complicated code, but it is going to involve a little bit of typing. We are going to find the minimum and maximum points for this axis align bounding box on each axis. So let's start with var p min is going to be equal to self.get min and var p max equals self.get max. And these are going to be the minimum and maximum uh, points, vector threes in 3D space of this axis line bounding box. Next, let us construct an array that is going to just contain each of the eight points which compose the axis line bounding box. A, a rectangular prism, as you may remember from geometry class, has eight points. And we're going to build them all. So I'm going to say var vertices equals an array, which is going to be composed of several things. Um, this is going to be an array of vectors, so new vector three. Uh, the first is going to be p min dot x, p min dot y, p min dot z. Uh, and there are going to be seven more. One for each point. Uh, we're going to have, let's say, p min x, min y, min z, min x, min y, max z, uh, min x, max y, min z, min x, max y, max z, uh, max x, min y, min z, max x, min y, max z, max x, max y, min z, max x, max y, max z. And that's another, that's another thing that I've, I've now said so many times, it doesn't sound like a word anymore. So this is an array uh, containing vector threes representing each of the eight vertices on this axis align bounding box. Next, we need to figure out the minimum and maximum values of each of these. If you just had a known axis that you were testing for, for example, the x-axis, or if, you're, if you knew you were testing for the y-axis or whatever, then you would really be able to just, to just get like min, get min dot x and get max dot x, and that would be your interval. But since we're testing for an arbitrary axis, uh, we're just going to loop through all these points and get the minimum and maximum values of those points on each axis. We can do that by saying var i min is gonna be equal to, uh, let's say axis dot, dot product against the uh, the zeroth vertex. And we can say var i max is gonna be equal to the axis dot, dot product against, again, the zeroth vertex. If you want, you can simplify this. You can just say i max is gonna be, be equal to initially i min. What is the what is the shortcut for opening up the start page in Game Maker? Because like I keep doing it by accident and I have no idea how I keep doing it by accident and I keep doing it. And if I knew what the short key was, I would just go into preferences and turn it off, but whatever. Anyway, after this, we can loop through for var i is gonna equal to one. i is less than eight, i plus plus. We can loop through the rest of the array and we can say var dot is going to equal axis dot dot against uh, vertices index i. Hey. And we can say i min is going to be equal to the minimum value of the existing i min, the existing uh, minimum interval, or you can, uh, or it's going to be the, um, the minimum of that or the, uh, the dot product. And i max is gonna be the maximum i max or the dot product. And this is just going to, uh, this loop is just figuring out the minimum and maximum value of uh, the axis dot product against each of these vertices. And then when we're done, we have, uh, we have our final i min and i max on um, whatever axis we specify, and we can return new call interval with the, uh, the minimum and maximum values being set to the minimum and maximum that we calculated in this get interval method. So that should be everything. Is there anything left that I need to implement? In the overlap axis method, we've implemented get interval in the um, in the check check ab method, check check ab sit, we've implemented uh, overlap access. This should work. If I were to run the demo program now, and if I were to spawn a couple axis align bounding boxes, we have the shapes are overlapping now. If I were to move one outside the other, beautiful. Okay, so as soon as as soon as the shape 
as soon as the first axis line bounding box leaves the second, uh, no longer a collision is no longer detected. Same is true on the other side. Same is not true on the other side. All right, I must have a. Did I like miss a, a greater than or less than or something somewhere? Oh ha! A dot val min is less than a dot val max. That should be a b, right? My notes, they agree. Okay, my notes want them the other way around. E dot val min is less than uh, a dot val max. That works. As long as as long as they both get calculated, it's fine. Uh, let's see, axis line bounding box and an axis line bounding box. Let's see if they both work on all axes this time. Uh, out the at the left, good. At the right, good. At the top, at the bottom, on the z axis, out the top and at the bottom. Okay, this works. We have a we have a um a separated axis theorem test for intersection between two axis line bounding boxes. That's fine. Both this and the version of the um, the ab ab overlap test that we've already written, they both work. Uh, this is, I believe, slightly more computationally expensive because it does a lot of jumping through functions and doing a lot of a lot of method calls. Um, whereas the version that we had originally just it basically did the same thing. It basically tested for um, the three axes the three axes overlapping, but it did it in it did it in far less code. Because, like I said earlier, we know the three axes that an axis line bounding box may be able to test, and we can we can just make some assumptions based on that, and we cannot have to jump through a lot of hoops involving like redundantly calculating the interval a bunch of times. So I think for the purposes of this uh, this demo, if anyone wants to use this code, I'm going to leave the initial version of um of check ab as the as the version that's actually being used, and uh, check ab sat. I leave the code here as as a point of interest. But, like, if someone wants a simple example of the, um, of the separated axis theorem, I'll leave the code here, but we won't really be making use of it, because it does a, it does a lot more calculations than it really has to. Okay. We will be seeing more of the separated axis theorem in the coming days. It will be coming in handy for some of the other shapes that we're testing for intersection against. I believe it is relied heavily upon when you start getting to oblique bounding boxes, which are basically axis line bounding boxes, but not axis aligned. Um, unfortunately, when I was doing my research for these videos, I, I found a lot of stuff on the internet about the separated axis theorem that was written in heavy math jargon, and it was hard to, it was hard to parse without, like, sitting down with a pen and paper and working your way through it, and I don't know exactly why that is, because it's not that complicated once you find someone who's, who's willing to actually try to explain it in English which I hope I've been able to do here for most of you. But regardless, I like this version of the SAT a lot better than the scholastic aptitude test myself. Anyway, I am going to commit this to source control. Let's uh, let's just call this bunch of SAT stuff. It's possibly the worst commit message I've ever written. Uh, that was only one commit in this entire video. That's probably not like a great practice, but Regardless, this is going to be the 0.11 release. Check for the GitHub repository in the description of this video. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, there'll be links to that in all the usual places. Otherwise, I try to post about two game dev videos a week, one of these and one Let's Make a Tower Defense game. I hope you all found that useful. Next time, I'm going to be implementing a few more helper functions before I get on to uh, triangle collisions. And I will see you all later. Special thanks to Connor, Edward Holt, Emily Coyo, Posho, Sindra Larson, Tusk, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or hear yourself shouted out at the end, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.